Lost generation, lost in the cost and the price for the playlist. Little bit of riddling, fill it in, fill it nil again. So I fill it with thrilling and delirium. A little more librium, fill my equilibrium. I'm delirious, so I'm serious. Black on my thoughts, my scars bring pain. These dark lords are big form of not be named. Roses. Smile pretty till the thorn exposes. It's all crowns to the crown deposes. And these downs expose hoes in our soldiers. These souls of war regicide the culture. Rest in peace, young kings. Whoever sees this and subscribes right now get a free wick. Candle not included. What's going on, YouTube? It's Noxo, and we're back with our reaction series. So today, today, man, it is Christmas Eve. Happy holidays to you all. What better way to celebrate this time of year than for us all to gather around the fire, have our childhood dreams ruined, because it's time for more ERB. Now, those of you guys who've been following me this week on socials, you know that I am under the weather with the disease that must not be named. I am finally feeling like I'm turning a corner a little bit. Still a little foggy, still a little tired, but I'm going to push through this one for you guys because it's a brand new ERB. I'm so excited to finally do this one. We got John Wick versus John McClane versus John Rambo. But before we go any further, I want to give a quick shout out to the song in the intro. Listen, guys, I dropped a brand new album. I made history. It charted on iTunes for the first time ever. Blacklist. I'm incredibly proud of it. You guys are loving it. Listen, if you want to support the channel directly, especially this holiday season, I'll put the links to it below. You can download it. You can stream it on all platforms. I'm giving away signed physical copies as well. Again, all links to that will be below. But anyways, anyways, we know what we're here for. ERB, step back up to the plate. Let's see what you got. What back rock battles of history? John what? Warson! Like this build. John McClain! <laughs> oh, I love the Die Hard reference already visually. In the first movie, Bruce Willis, a.k.a. John McClain, runs around kicking everyone's ass barefooted. In this case, Lloyd is also barefooted, paying homage to that. Oh. John what? Is that my boy MC Napkins? That is. Shout out to Zach Sherwin, man. He's a rhyming beast. Warson! John McClain! Warson! John Rambo! <laughs> we got Alright. Guess I'll be the one to draw first blood. Or maybe you could draw an audience to see any of your new movies. Come out to the coast, we'll have a few laughs. Sounds sweet, but no, I'm stuck here with these two jerkweeds about to kick their ass with bare feet. <laughs> I'll drop the beat. Oh, already the nostalgia is great. Shout out to Rambo starting it off in his movie, First Blood. In this case, he's going to draw First Blood in the battle. I love how you have it set up where the, you know we're spinning around all three characters. Is this the first ever ERB where we have three characters to start it with? Because, I mean, normally we do have guest appearances, but never do we start with three taking it off at once. So this is very different already, but it's got a really cool energy. I love how they're kind of deciding, you know, who's going to come in, who's going to start off this battle and start taking heads and then john wick just comes through and trolls everyone because obviously the last rambo movie meh, yeah yeah kind of flopped i guess you could say critically uh still made money though i mean the last Die Hard movie still made money too but yeah people didn't love it critics didn't love it either didn't do as well you could definitely argue that all three of the john wick movies are pretty badass and pretty sound so uh he's kind of carrying the torch well through the quality throughout no real drop off there and then obviously we got lloyd shouting out his bare feet saying he's gonna kick rambo's ass and also wick's ass and nothing but his bare feet stuck here with these two jerkweeds about to kick their ass with bare feet i got drop the beat i said it all Argyle dropped the beat. Argyle, that was his that was his limo driver. Yes! Oh, so many references already. These two jerkweeds about to kick their ass with bare feet. Argyle dropped the beat. I set it off like it's the top of Nakatomi. Woo. Fire hose swing on you, you both so below me. I'll set it off like it's the top of Nakatomi. Uh Nakatomi. They took the top off of Nakatomi when uh McLean was he was there trying to win back his wife, wasn't he? Ah, oh, I'm so God. It's been so long since I've seen the first Die Hard movie. But anyways, Hans Gruber, uh, they masked as terrorists. Really, they were trying to rob the place, but they took off the, the top of Nagatomi. Hence that, like he's setting it off, like the top of that, the terrorists taking over, grabbing hostages, trying to get to the vault and the safe. And then, uh, what was the next lines? COVID sucks sometimes with your brain. Anyway. Set it off like it's the top of Nakatomi. Need a fire hose to swing on you, you boat so below me. <laughs> Need a fire, that's right. Because when the explosion happens, uh, McLean escapes from it and doesn't get captured because he uses a fire hose that he swings from to escape. And in this case, he's talking about his overly large fire hose as well. Yeah, that's right. That's a dick joke. TRB people, get used to it. If it stopped killing it, it's caused for the Tony, and I Oof. got your detonators right here. Blow me. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, blow him. Right, give him fellatio, but also a detonator exploding. He's got your detonators. Uh, makes me think of, uh, well, the first person that he killed, Carl's brother, Tony. Carl was second in command to Hans Gruber. And then also McLean stole the detonators and the equipment. And then didn't Gru- Gruber pretended to be one of the hostages that escaped. And McLean gave him a gun, but it wasn't loaded. And then Gruber tried to shoot him with it. And uh, McLean trolls him with the detonators as well. But then Gruber gets back to the detonators. Oh, it's all coming back. I love it. Look at the top of knock a <laughs> Need a fire hose to swing on you. You both so below me. I haven't stopped killing it since Carl's brother Tony. And I got your detonators right here. Blow me. Oops. Ship your booby traps home, Rambo. Because you'll never take the W without the P&O. Does your lip hang low? Does it wobble to and fro? Can you string that shit up on your compound bow? I love the facial acting from Lloyd. You know, it's like he's barely moving his lips when he's trying to troll Rambo and Stallone because, as we know, uh, Sylvester Stallone has a little bit of a facial paralysis. That's why he talks in such a unique way, and he's not as expressive when he acts because he just he just can't be because of that. So he's playing off of that in the popular, you know, do your ears hang low? Do they wobble to the floor? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? What What does that even mean? Why was I taught that as a child? That is kind of disturbing, actually, when you think about it. And then Rambo, the booby traps. He really likes his uh, his booby traps, setting traps, especially Rambo 2. Well, no, he did it in Rambo. He did it in all of them, didn't he? When he's hiding out in the woods in First Blood and the police officers are trying to get him. And uh, he's got different booby traps set for him. Same in uh, when he's fighting the Viet Cong in the second one. Booby traps home, Rambo. Because you'll never take the W without the P&O. And how can I not point out the greatest line of all that? The best wordplay so far. P-O-W, prisoner of war. Rambo was a P-O-W, but also you'll never take the W as in the win. In this case, the P&O. What a great play on words. The lip hang low. Does it wobble to and fro? Can you string that shit up on your compound bow? Lighten up, wick, with your brooding saga. Hop. That's so dope. That shit up on your cup, <coughs> Lighten up, wick, with your brooding saga. Hop. Look at that. That is the exact same shot that they had in the movie when Bruce Willis, who at the beginning, remember we talked about the, um, what the hell was it? I don't even remember if I said this or not. This happened in my head, and I don't remember if I communicated it with you all. Hang on. Where is it? Right there. Draw an audience to see any of your new movies. Come out to the coast, we'll have a few laughs. Come out to the coast, we'll have a few laughs. So when he's crawling through the air vent, right, he's basically just trolling in his own way because he's like, how did I get in this situation, this scenario? Oh yeah, come out to the coast, we'll have a few laughs. It'll be a great time. Look at me, now I'm fucking fighting Hans Gruber and trying to take on people all by myself and my goddamn bare feet. Yeah. But that scene, when he's in the duck and he switches on the lighter and he says that, they just did that right here in ERB. That is great visual connection right there. So cool, man. And also, lighten up Wick. Get it? Because John Wick, like lighting up a candle, lighten up. Why do you take life and things so seriously, John Wick? You're always so brooding. Oh, nice wordplay on that one, too. Not Keanu. Keanu's been in so many iconic movies. The Matrix, John Wick, Constantine. But he's always kind of the same character, isn't he? He doesn't really change in terms of his acting expression. So being flat with your acting, right? He's basically trolling him, saying, you know, Wick, you're not you're not a very good actor. But also Hans Gruber died in the end. We let the watch go, and then he falls to his death. And yeah, he goes, goes splat. Baba Yaga reference. Shout out to Baba Yaga which was one of the names that the Russians had for John Wick. I never understood that one, though, because if you know uh, a little bit of Slavic folklore and Baba Yaga, it was actually a witch who would uh, cook up and eat little children, and she lived in a little house uh, that spun around on chicken legs. That was the original Baba Yaga, was a witch, not like a cold-hearted, badass assassin. That is John Wick. Hakuna Matata, we all know Lion King references. Am I going to have to explain all this? I probably am. There's going to be someone that comments, you didn't get that, you didn't get that. Well, I'm sick, and it's Christmas. This is my gift to you. Let's keep it going. Brooding Saga, how about a little Hakuna Matata, Baba Yaga? You got the trout tape and the watch booker, but you're at- Ah, the watch booker, because, yeah, he does He does wear a booker watch throughout, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And then what was it, the second one, when he's getting all outfitted to go badass- in Italy, how do you want your trousers? Tapered. So he plays off of that. 
man, there's just, just going to be so much to unpack because, you know, you've got a bunch of different movie references and three different characters to reference. Lacuna Matata, Baba Yaga. You got the trousers, tape, and the watch, Booker. But your acting falls flatter than the hot, Gruber. Leave the underground coin game to Mario Brothers. And John, <laughs> Booby. What the fuck's with the chest butter? The bed <laughs> Hans, Booby, I'm your white knight. <laughs> Another Die Hard reference. Oh God, what was his name? He got he got killed in the end. There's a there's a child that's getting murdered in the other room, as well. Sorry guys, we're back. Everything's normal and okay. I promise. What were we talking about? Uh, the um, when he one of the hostages. I can't think of his name right now. Someone's gonna have to comment below. But anyways, that was one of the famous lines that he's referencing there. But in this case, he's flipping it onto uh, onto Rambo. And then what else we got? Leave the underground coin game because um, at the high table, you know, when, when John goes to the hotel and when he works for the secret organization of assassins, they use coins, right? That's their, they have their own coin system of monetary payments for setting up jobs and stuff. Underground coin game to Mario Brothers. And John, <laughs> Bobby. What the fuck's with the... Oh, underground coin game. Get it? Because like they're an underground organization, right? They're a shadow underground organization, but also Mario Brothers underground because they were plumbers pipes go underground and they used to collect coins as they would go up through the pipes that was very clever wordplay right there Leave the underground coin game to mario brothers and john booby what the fuck's with the chest butter the bandolier looks heavy as shit i'm like this <laughs> prince ring finger only need one clip god, I've been shopping oh that's john wick parabellum isn't it when he wants to return to the high table and he has to show his fealty that he's truly back in the game. So he has to take his wedding ring and cut his finger off to get back in it. it looks heavy as shit. I'm like this prince ring. And then the chest butter because, I mean, obviously, you know, Rambo was always very sweaty. Didn't really appreciate shirts. They were too constricting for his muscular figure. Finger only need one clip. God, I've been shopping shattered glass since the late 80s. <laughs> like your late pump, I'll leave you pushing up daisies. Less is more, boys. That's... Oh, that's just fucked up. No, I mean, come on. That's how we started this whole thing. They killed it. They killed his puppy, and his puppy was called Daisy, right? Pushing up daisies. That is an idiom for dying, pushing up daisies, being buried underground. But also, his pup was called Daisy after his wife died of cancer. She left him this dog to be his companion to help him with the grief. And then we all know the story of how the dog was killed. John Wick went back to being. John Wick. Oh, come on. Don't do that, Brucey. Eighties, like your late pup, I'll leave you pushing up daisies. Less is more, boys. That's my advice. You less survival knife, you more survival wife. Ooh. That hurts me. You less survival knife, you Mr. Knifey Knife Man. You like to cut up a lot of people. We know that. We get the Rambo thing. And then the survival wife, that that one hurts because, yeah, John Wick lost his wife, who he loved. And his wife was the reason why he gave up being an assassin and being a part of the, the brotherhood and all that. So, hmm. Man. That was, <laughs> that was, uh, I was just firing shots left and right from McLean. I mean, just Latin with references, some great wordplay. Love the delivery from Lloyd. Obviously, the New York type of accent, you know, very tongue-in-cheek with the humor, right? Very, very John McClane-esque. He did a good job with that. You less survival knife, you more survival wife. <laughs> Ooh. I'm gonna need a dinner <laughs> reservation for two. John Wick, I'm efficient and lean. A proficient professional killing machine. I'm a proficient professional killing machine. I just love the smooth delivery. I've talked about this before. The the flow pockets and the internal condensed rhyme schemes that Sherwin always seems to have on these ERBs, man. It is it is chef's kiss from an MC perspective. And what makes it even better for me is just how he's matching and mimicking sort of Keanu's rough coarse voice just his style very suave very cool calm collected at all times and he's phoning up a dinner reservation for two in this case he's implying that he's going to kill and assassinate mr mclean and mr rambo that's why he's calling them to clean it up like he did in the movie when he had a dinner reservation for 12 because he had 12 bodies that needed to be cleaned up Ooh. 
I'm gonna <laughs> need a dinner reservation for two. Oh, I miss flip phones. John Wick, I'm efficient and lean, a proficient professional killing machine. Mm. Underworld overachiever looking dapper as a buck and only one. I love how the beat just like fully just breaks down here and it's all about just the percussion. You've got sort of a, a subdued drop down within the production. So we kind of carry in and focus more in on Wick and his schemes and what he's doing. Nice production switch to match the change of who's going right now. Professional killing machine, underworld overachiever looking dapper as a buck and only one of us to go three chapters without sucking. Between your elevator and the mine where you were trapped, you're we talked, he used this at the beginning as well, but yeah, it is a good one. I mean, unfortunately, it is a good day to die hard. I mean, they just, the late movies weren't as good. They weren't as good, all right? Wick is still good. I mean, for me, it's the, um, it's the conversation within John Wick that really makes all three of those movies great. The, the dialogue is on another level. The violence is... It's okay, the action's okay. National killing machine, underworld, overachiever, looking dapper as a buck, and only one of us to go three chapters without sucking. Between your elevator and the mine where you were trapped, you're such wieners, I should call you both John Shaft. I cracked right. <laughs> Between your elevator and the mine where you were trapped, get it a mine shaft, an elevator shaft, I should call you both John Shaft. Wieners, you wieners, a wiener. Dick can also be called a shaft, wiener, shaft, three different ways of connecting to the shaft. I like that. Later in the mind where you were trapped, you're such wieners, I should call you both John Shaft. I craft rhymes with pencils, then jam them in next, so I'm not vexed by that. <laughs> One of the most iconic John Wick scenes is when he kills someone with a pencil. I mean, it was badass. Did he jab it in the neck? I thought he took his head and slammed it onto the table on top of it, didn't he? Both John Anyways, iconic. And I love how he's, you know, killing them with his pencil, but also he could literally kill you with a pencil as well. Nice double. Shaft. I craft rhymes with pencils, then jam them in next. So I'm not vexed by vets. Flex and Roy injected pex. Be an ex. Flex by vets injecting. See the X to the X to the X to the X again. He's just got fantastic internal rhyme schemes. Stop it, camera. The camera lost the, uh, the focus for a second. All right, we're still there. We're still good. It's okay. This is not a shit show. I am holding it together so far. With pencils, then jam them in next. So I'm not vexed by Vex, Flex and Roid Injected Pex. Be an ex community. Yeah. Vex by Vex, Flex and Roid Injected Pex. Again. Mm, it's the. Oh, man. So smooth. And uh, Rambo, very buff, right? Willis, very buff. Wick is implying that, uh, well, they like steroids. How you like that, Roger Clemens? So then jam him in next, so I'm not vexed by vets, flex and roid injected pex. Being an excommunicado wasn't more than I could handle, so I think I can withstand an excremental excommando in this set. Excremental excommando? Ugh. A shitty excommando, but it also makes me think of, you know, the infamous Rambo scene when he's just got basically mud and shit, feces all over his face. Excremental excommando, and then he's even taking the, uh, Good old poop pose right there as he sits on his porcelain throne of rhymes. Kato wasn't more than I could handle, so I think I can withstand an excremental excommando when this sad broken dad joke and popo is no foe for the hurt. Sad broken dad joke and popo is no joke. I mean, woo it's the rhymes, baby. He is locked in. Every other word is rhyming right now, and I love it. Withstand an excremental excommando when this sad broken dad joke and popo is no foe for the virtuoso bad virtuoso. Ho, ho, ho. Virtuoso, bad virtuoso. Nice play on the O schemes, and obviously Popo because John McClane being a cop. Popo, nice. Dad broken, dad joking. Popo is no foe for the virtuoso. Oh, and dad joking because yeah, McClane is not the best of fathers, is he? And you've even got the plot of the last movie about that. Bad virtuoso. Ho 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 to quivers and bows. I'm delivering blows, and when they land, it won't help to make fists with your toes. Bitcoin. Fists with your toes, and when they land, oh my God, that's clever, right? Because the first Die Hard movie starts, McLean's on the plane, and he struggles with traveling, and then he gets that weird advice from the guy who tells him to walk around barefooted, hence how he gets barefooted, but he tells him to make fists with your toes on the carpet, and it'll, it'll help you with it. Get it? When the plane lands, when his blows land, make fists with your toes. Ooh, that was a good one. And then there was a, what was it, the ho, ho, ho to quivers and bows? Ho, 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 Christmas reference because Die Hard happens on Christmas Eve. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. All right, sorry, I'm not sorry. Just because it doesn't have Santa and reindeer, it's more badass than that. Okay, it is a Christmas movie.
Get over yourselves. And then there's a scene in Die Hard 2, isn't there? When, um, oh, is M- McLean, is that when he makes the first kill? I can't remember exactly. But anyways, he, he gets the machine gun and he writes on the, the dude's shirt. He goes, ho, ho, ho. Now I have a machine gun. And that's the message that he leaves the Gruber and the baddies. That's nice. There are so many references in this. This is great. I can handle, so I think I can withstand an excremental ex commando and this sad, broken dad joke at Popo is no foe for the virtuoso bad virtuoso. Ho ho Man. ho to quivers and bows. I'm delivering blows and when they la- quivers and bows, delivering blows. I mean again. The multi-syllable rhyme scheme is so good. Oh, so bad, virtuoso. Ho, ho, ho to quivers and bows. I'm delivering blows, and when they land, it won't help to make fists with your toes. Bitcoin? No. Hitcoin? Certainly. I'll get you two in tune. Call it cryptocurrency. Obey your... Sub- that was a good setup. Right? We talked about the coins and how, you know, his underground world, how they use their own coins, and they have their own form of currency playing off of crypto currency but also crypto leaving you in a tomb hit coin certainly hit coin because he's taking out a hit on both of them put you two in tomb call it crypto currency wow wow the crypto currency to the tombs the currency within the films that is that's that's good wordplay. Obey your superior like good cops and soldiers raven <laughs> roy you're done over nothing is Good cops and soldiers, right? Rambo was a soldier. McLean was a cop. They always have to listen to their superiors. Raven was the, um, that was a call sign for Rambo, wasn't it? And then Roy, Roy was the name that uh, Willis gave to Grouper. Why are we mainly doing like the the first movie references from Die Hard? That's the one that I just don't remember as well. Like good cops and soldiers. Raven, Roy, you're done. Over. Nothing is over. Nothing. <laughs> you just don't turn it on. <laughs> it's one of your movies. In which case, I just turn it off. <gasps> when I re- Nothing is over. Right? Towards the end of Rambo First Blood, when he uh, has that moment and he talks about how the war really is never over. Nothing is over. You know? His, uh, his commander tries to tell him to, you know, pack it in. It's done. But he's like, you know, you don't know what I've been through. Coming back. You know, being a war veteran, suffering from PSD, and then he tells that story of his of his boy who just got blown up at the bar right in front of him and had bits all over him. Oh man, Rambo, hell of a life, Rambo, hell of a life. But uh, I love the voice that Peter is doing for Rambo right now, and just the expressions, the acting for all three of them to match their characters. Love it. It's one of your movies. In which case, I just turn it off. <gasps> Oh, listen to the epic build of those percussive hits, man. So good. That's just, I don't know why it makes me think of this jungle vibe for Rambo. Uh, <gasps> when I rip off my shirt and start swinging my stick nice. toes, I'm hotter than the Suicide Curls on your switchboard. Right. Head bed. <laughs> suicide Curls reference. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Right? The ones who take the calls, like when uh, Wick was put out a hit on him for being excommunicado. Right, they run a phone switchboard. They all are tattooed up, looking like Suicide Girls. Yeah, I guess you could say that. If you don't know what Suicide Girls is, um, yeah, this is Christmas and it is family friendly today. So you can Google that later on when you're alone. Anyways, let's keep it rolling. Red, but I got no lo- Big toes, I'm hotter than the Suicide Girls on your switchboard. My headband's red, but I got no love for coffee. No juice was used to produce these army <laughs> Oh, I mean, it's it's purposefully written this way to be, I don't know, like, Wick was definitely deeper with some of his lines. McLean had some surface level lines, some deeper lines as well. But, you know, Rambo is very, very surface level. You know, it's, it's a lot more easier to pick up, I think, because, you know, Rambo wasn't the most intelligent of men, was he? So they're reflecting that through the lyricism. These armies, right? Get it? Arm, me's, these armies. He's not injecting. He puffed up for this moment. He's been training his whole life. Red headband that he's known for wearing, but also communism run by the red color. Hey, but I got no love for commie. No juice was used to produce these army. High table rules don't apply to this conflict. I'll finish you right in the lobby. This didn't come. 
right? Uh, because the whole reason Wick becomes excommunicado is because he kills someone in the hotel, which he breaks the rules. He's not allowed to do that. In this case, Rambo's going, I don't have rules. There are no rules in proper warfare. Not this battle. Who's gonna apply to this conflict? I'll finish you right in the lobby. This shit is complicated. South is where your marriage went. The last pipe thing you slid in was an air vent. Best Rambo bar so far. Last tight thing you slid in was an air vent. We talked about the infamous air vent scene when he flicks on the lighter. But, uh, yeah, I mean, McLean, bad dad, bad husband. Kind of summarizes McLean. That hurts. Hey, South is where your marriage went. The last pipe thing you slid in was an air vent. They used to say you were a handsome crusader. Too bad your hairline couldn't get saved by Steve Urkel's neighbor. Oh! What is that? Just that little switch up. It just gets melodic and beautiful with that guitar for a second. And uh, Steve Urkel's neighbor, Carl Winslow. Oh, man, we're going back to the Urkel days. Oh, and he played the cop who saved uh, saved McLean. Saved his life in the first one. But in this case, Bruce Willis, you know, throughout the Die Hard movies, has a receding hairline, as we know. And then within the last movie, he's totally bald. And some crusader. Too bad your hairline couldn't get saved. And I mean, you know, Rambo did have a... Beautiful mane of hair. That's for certain, like a lion. Steve Urkel's neighbor. Oh, I slip into the jungle, disappear like a gulf. Then ding, I pop up I'm behind you like toast. <laughs> Let's see what I mean again. Ding, I pop up behind you like toast. <laughs> very, very surface level, shallow lines. Uh, but they mean a lot to Rambo. That's for sure. And I love, I love the visual reference when he's just covered in mud and he's hiding within the mud. Comes up like predator and just yeah nice one jungle disappear like a ghost that thing i pop up i'm behind you like <laughs> i see peace but i'm packing parabella i was trying to be the very best soldier boy tell him. Blessed, I'm soldier boy tell him oh we got soldier boy references in this you that's ridiculous also shout out to uh john wick parabellum the third movie but he's packing parabellum Type of uh, stock ammunition as well. He's but a pack of parabella. I was trying to be the very best soldier boy. Tell I'm blessing on PG through NYPD's guts. Hmm. Simon says you can PTSD. Oh, we got a later uh, Die Hard reference uh, when he has to play essentially like a Simon Says game to try to stop all the bombs. NYPD, he's blasting an RPG. That could be a reference to Rambo First Blood when he's taking on the Popos. It could also be a reference to John McClane, NYPD. He threw NYPD's guts. Simon says you can PTSD. Jesus Christ, asshole. What are you doing? This is not some Saturday morning cartoon for you to ruin. Only thing get oh, I forgot about that. They did a Rambo cartoon. Yeah, Rambo. Violent movie. Man undergoes PTSD from being a war veteran. All the war horror stories. And they wanted to make it a children's cartoon. Yeah, that didn't go so well. Ruined this McLean family Christmas. All your kids still have decent dad on their wish list. Whoa, Rambo. Oh, not the dad thing again. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's all. That's all his kids want. They just want dad to be there. Dad doesn't have to save the world all the time. Clay family Christmas. All your kids still have decent dad on their wish list. Whoa, Rambo dropping bombs in his clothes. Your pals in the Taliban help you right. We got a little like jingle bells. Santa Claus is coming to town in the back of the mix. I love that switch up. Whoa, Rambo dropping bombs in his clothes. Your pals in the Taliban help you right those. Those were Mujahideen. There's yeah. a difference. The Taliban formed in the 90s when you fell off with a vengeance. Hey. Oh, die hard with a vengeance. Falling off in the 90s because, again, it could be argued after that, the, uh, the die hard movies went downhill unfortunately and i was going to point that out but wick did it for me correcting that because uh rambo did not fight with the taliban in the third movie he fought alongside the muhajin which was fighting the soviet union at the time later they would become the taliban and transform into them and yes the uh, cia did arm them with weapons and train them and do all that so in a way we kind of created our own enemy How's irony for you? Dean, there's a difference. The Taliban formed in the 90s when you fell off with a vengeance. Hey, who the fuck asked you, dog pound? Don't you go lock your mouth in a hole in the ground? Oh, not the dog reference. The, the dog references get me. They really do. Right, dog pound. His dog got pounded into the ground. And then lock his mouth in a hole in the ground because, again, he tried to lock away his past life 
into a hole in the ground, which he infamously digs up and returns to being the badass that is Mr. Wick. Who the fuck asked you, dog pound? Don't you go lock your mouth in a hole in the ground? Hole. You're both a funeral pseudo. <laughs> hole. Lock. Now he's having PTSD right there in the middle of the battle. Oh, no. Also, sexy chicken time. Sorry, guys. Camera died, but we are back. Let's keep it rolling. <laughs> you're both a funeral suit away from presentable. I'm thinking I'm back. And I'm thinking you're expendable. You wanna die? A funeral suit away from presentable because he's basically saying, I'm going to bring death to your doorstep right now. And then you'll finally look presentable because, well, you're running around all beat and cut up with, you know, no shoes on. You're not going to get service in any store, are you? And then Rambo over here, we're not even going to get started on... What is going on with that man? Suit away from presentable. I'm thinking I'm back. And I'm thinking you're expendable. You wanna oh, and then the expendables. Willis was in the expendables and so was Stallone. Is that, that's an expendables movie reference, isn't it? But also they're expendable. Die hard? Well, today's a good day. Let's ah. go, motherfuckers. Yippee ki Let's go, motherfucker. Yippee ki yay. Yippee ki yay. One of Bruce Willis's famous sayings. And also, when he's got his pistol strapped to his back, again, another Die Hard movie reference. Do you want to die hard in this case? Wow, so many references throughout this. That was fun. Wow. I really enjoyed that one. What a great energy throughout. I mean, packed full of references. So any fans of the movies definitely had a lot of Easter eggs to unpack with that one. In terms of who won this one. All right, for me, I really like McLean's first verse. I like a lot of the shots that he took. I like the characterization that Lloyd played of Bruce Willis, of John McClane. So I lean towards him, but then I'm thinking more on Sherwin's verse. And as an MC myself, those those rhyme schemes and those flows, yeah, they did it for me. They did it for me. I think McClane had some better lines overall. Wick had some good lines. And then Rambo was just meant to be Rambo and just, you know, blunt force trauma and just fuck shit up with, uh, with his rhymes. Yeah. All right. It's very close bet between McClane and Wick, but I'm going to give it to Wick. Based off the flows and just the crazy internal rhyme schemes, McLean had the better lines, though, so he's two, and then Rambo is three. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Anyways, ERB, you are Knox Hill certified. So hope you guys liked today's video. Thank you for bearing with me. I know I am not at a full 100% capacity, but I've done the best that I can. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to go lay back down now and uh, try to get some rest. But have a Merry Christmas. Have a Happy Holidays with your family. Stay safe. Stay positive. I love you guys. I will catch you again. Take care. I'm out.